Hello, I'm Lou and welcome back to Open Up The Cloud. And I've actually got a real resume from an actual cloud engineer. But it's not just the resume that we're actually looking at, as we've also got some linked GitHub projects and we've also got a website to have a look at. By the way, in this video, I might say CV a few times. I actually mean resume, but in the UK, we call it CV rather than resume. So the journey really starts and I bumped into Alex on the Dev2 platform. So Alex has been doing these sort of diary entries where he's talking about the different things that he's been learning. Okay, so let's start at the very top here. Let's just have a look through the resume and what different parts we've got in there. We've got some projects, so we've got event-driven Python and AWS. We've got Cloud Resume Challenge and we've got hand-coded blog, web app and portfolio website. Under that, we've got a couple of certifications, developer associate, solutions architect associate and the cloud practitioner. Wonderful. And then under that, we've got some work experience. Okay, so the first thing that I noticed actually about Alex's resume was this strap line up here. So we have self-motivated, detail-oriented career changer, pursuing cloud engineer and developer positions. Okay, so this isn't bad, but I couldn't help but feel like this is a little bit underwhelming. So what I really want to see here is really sell a specific position that you're going for and really sell yourself and let's see some of that unique personality come out in that leading sentence or paragraph. Now, if you don't have a tech background, if you're like someone like Alex here and you don't necessarily have a lot of experience within the industry, sort of a mistake that I see many people do, self-identifying as like a career changer or as potentially like an aspiring developer or aspiring engineer, remove all of that stuff and instead just say in the present tense, I am a software engineer. So one thing that really stood out to me about Alex's resume is this focus up at the top about projects. Now, you should be spending a ton of your time focusing on building out realistic, real world projects because that's going to give you something to talk about in interview. It's going to give you a case study to talk about when they ask you about X technology or Y. It's great to see that up top. If I was going to be quite critical here and say what I would like to see even more of is maybe take one of these projects and potentially let's do it as a freelance one. Now in the tech industry, you can go through that front door and you can apply with your resume to these different positions in these different companies. However, what you can do is if you're getting knocked back at the interview stage, you can actually sort of circumnavigate that front door and go in the side door by actually building experience as a freelancer. Now, what I mean by that is go out and ask maybe friends or a family if there's some sort of project that you can build for them. Obviously, at a basic level, it could be something like a website. You could host that on AWS, on EC2, something like that. And then you've got a real world project that you can put onto your resume that you can use to talk about. Now, it doesn't even matter if that person actually pays you for that project or not. You can still have that. They were a client, you were a freelance engineer, and then you have actual experience on your resume that you can talk about. We know that in today's day and age that actually the resume itself isn't the only component part that you will hand over to an employer to have a look at. You also have things like your GitHub profile, you've got blogs as well and things like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually take a look at this first project up here. I'm assuming that Alex is going to put his best foot forward and this is going to be the project that's probably is the best and the most complicated because it's up top. That assumption might be completely wrong, but that's the kind of thing that I would be thinking if I'm reviewing this CV. So that project is Cloud Challenge Python ETL. First of all, really cool to see Terraform in there. I analyzed 100 different cloud engineering resumes and Terraform came out as one of the biggest. In fact, it was the biggest infrastructure as code tool. So it's really great to see that Alex has got that in here. One thing that I would say to do here straight away is let's start to get a directory structure in there. If we start to get a directory structure in there, it's going to give that impression that this project's a little bit more complicated, right? If your project gets up to sort of 20, 30, 40, 50 files, like you will do all the time in an enterprise context, you'll start to organize those things into directories. So if you put directories into your project, it will kind of give that sort of implicit feeling that this project isn't something super simple. One thing that's great to see about this project in particular, though, is that we've got a whole bunch of different tests. That's really going to stand out as someone who's coming into the industry because it's something that a lot of people tend to overlook. Adding tests in there, that's a massive plus for me. I actually scrolled down here and I had a look at the readme. Now, I've actually figured out that if I go back to the resume, Alex has got a design narrative. So he's actually written a blog about this project on his CV. But on the first glance, I didn't actually see that. I scrolled down to the readme, expecting that to kind of be the standard place that if you had a write-up that it would be linked from. I kind of wanted that narrative here. If you could add a link to that blog from this readme, that would be great. Potentially even consider taking out a bunch of this content and just having like, you know, this big sort of, you know, pointing here, like read this design narrative. That's where all the good information is as well. Now, if we actually go back and go into that design narrative, let's have a quick look at how that looks. So we've got event-driven Python on AWS. One thing that stood out to me as well about this blog post, if I scroll down to the bottom, we've got here room for growth. This is great. If you're doing a project, you absolutely must have some areas that you would potentially improve that project. This is such a cheap and easy way to show that you're thinking about more advanced things. You don't even have to necessarily do them. If you just mentioned that you would add tests, you would add monitoring, you would add alerts, you would add logging. All of these different things are going to show that you're thinking about some of these more advanced concepts without actually necessarily even doing them. Go over here and I'm going to have a look at those commits. So what I'm looking for is really what kind of practices does this person have? You know, do they add meaningful commit messages? And one of the things that did stand out to me here is we've got over here, we've got these checks that are failing. You go and look at any big sort of open source project. Everything that's on that default branch is always going to be green and like a pull request. And when they have the pull request, they ensure that all tests pass and any continuous integration is also passing as well. 
even though you're working on your own project, I would make pull requests, keep them separate, add nice commit messages, add nice description to those, and ensure that your tests are passing as well before you merge them into the main branch. Now, the reason that that's important is because those are the types of practices that you'll be doing in the workplace. So after looking at Alex's resume for a little bit, what I also stumbled upon was also that he had a website. Now, the website is great, but one thing that I would say as well is it wasn't prominently signposted within the resume, which is a little bit weird. So if I scroll down here, eventually I actually find Alex's website over here, but it wasn't necessarily called out up top. The thing is, this website actually is great for Alex, but I just don't understand why it's buried so deep in his resume. You know, have that at the top as an employer. If you've got a website like that, that's going to be way more interactive and way more interesting. I'm probably going to go straight to that website and use that website almost as a replacement for the resume itself. And let's see some of the things that we've got going on here. So, hey, I'm Alex, a cloud engineer developer, and then I've got an about me page, I've got a projects page, and I've got a blog. Okay, cool. We're kind of covering off some of the main things here. We've got a resume, wonderful Twitter, so you can see that you're active on social media, and we've got a GitHub profile, that's great. The next thing that I did is I went over here and went into Alex's about page. One thing that I really want to point out here that I thought was really awesome is Alex is really showing some personality in here. So we've got this actual bike, and we can see that Alex is really into cycling. If I scroll down here a little bit more as well, we've also got some more images of Alex out there cycling. Unlike that introductory sentence on Alex's resume, when you go to his website, some of that personality, that unique aspect really comes out here. If we head over onto the projects page again, so we've got a little bit of an overview of the different projects. Put one up there and say like, this is my main project. This is the one that I want you to look at. Add lots of complexity in that as well and kind of see that as sort of your capstone of your resume. So what else have we got here? We've also got a blog, which looks great. We've got a whole bunch of different learnings and some interesting stuff that we can dig into there. Then we've also got his resume and a contact form as well, which is great in case we want to contact Alex. So all in all, I'd actually say that Alex did a really good job with his resume here. So he's got the website, which looks really great. We've got projects, we've got blogs, we've got evidence of that kind of learning process. Okay, that's everything that I was going to go through in this video. If you want to send me your resume to have a look at and you're happy for it to be on the channel and let me review it like this, then that would be awesome because then we can all look at it at the same time. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.